Hi, this is Vicki, also known as Dragonfly7673. It is um, Friday, March 17th. It is not quite 5.30. And even though I'm recording this today, I'm actually going to post it either Saturday or Sunday because um, part of what I'm going to show you today is the secret project, but I'm not actually giving it to the recipient until tomorrow, Saturday afternoon. Um, afternoon, early evening, and I just, I want to make sure that it is in their hands before I post this. So, <laughs> but I, I will, um, be in, um, I'll be visiting mom and my son, actually best friend and I both will, and so I won't be recording, I won't be recording tomorrow, and it's very rare that I record on Sundays anymore. So, I just figured I'd record now. And get this ready to go. So I'm going to pause here and intersperse the videos that I have been putting together for the secret project. So this is the start of a new project that I am going to be saving the pieces, assuming everything goes right, um, because this is going to be a present for a friend. Um, it's actually um, one of my son's ex-girlfriends but she uh, she's very sweet I am actually still friends with her and her mom and she is due she's going to have a baby in the next month so and very sweet girl and so I've been kind of wanting to do something for them because they also crochet so they understand and they actually invited me. I was invited to the baby shower. I didn't go, but I was invited to the baby shower. And I asked my son if, when I was home, if he would be okay with me making something. Because I, I realize it's still an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> so he, uh, and he said, yeah, he, he said, yeah, I think they would really like that. So I actually got, found a pattern that I liked and then got yarn. So I have not started this yet. Um, today is February 6th. Um, she's due in about three weeks, but I'm not real concerned about getting this to her before the baby is born. So, um, it will be, be, it'll be okay. Anyway, so I picked this pattern. It's called the Teddy Bear Blanket. It is not available in Ravelry. I actually purchased the pattern through the Etsy shop. Um, it's a Dada's Place pattern from Dragana Savkov Bajik. I'm not sure where that's from, but <laughs> the pattern had a ton of comments on Ravelry saying that it was very good, um, even though it's not sold there. And it's got, I don't want to show too much, but it's got tons of picture tutorials along the way. The only thing I'm going to be changing is that the, um, this is done with basically like pony beads for the eyes and I don't like the idea of putting beads on something for a baby so I'm going to embroider the eyes and I saw several people on Ravelry did the same thing something else that somebody said is because they were embroidering the face actually I saw a few people reference somebody else's project and so I went and looked at that person's project and um, when embroidering the face the ends would be on the back so she actually made a second disc and gave the the bear a uh, back of the head. So all the embroidery ends are actually inside. So I'm going to be doing that. Um, I have not started this yet. My thought is that each of the squares should be fairly portable. So once I get started, I could actually like take this to work. Um, but... This is the color I picked for my bears. And it is, this is Big Twist Baby. And then for the alternative colors, and this, the pattern calls for a DK weight. This is a worsted weight. I figured, who cares, it's gonna make bigger squares. Um, when I run out of yarn, that'll be how many squares I make or how, you know that or when I'm feeling kind of done so I'm trying to 
pull out the other colors. All right, and so these are the these are the colors I chose ah! <laughs> for the rest of the colors. They're kind of fun names. Um, well, no, this one I can't find it. Oh, there, Baby Dandelion. I'm like, I know I saw names on there. Uh, Baby Rosebud. One of them I think is... This one must be. Yep, Baby Goldfish. <laughs> that, one, that one made me giggle. Baby Bluebird. And Baby Sweet Pea. So... This one's baby elephant. <laughs> um, in I wanted to keep it all the same yarn, and in this yarn, the only colors that would be appropriate for the bears was this one or white, and I didn't want to do white, so I had this one. Now, if you look, the bear color actually becomes the outside of the of some of the other ones. So. I thought it would be cute. I thought it would be fairly portable and probably fairly easy um, to memorize after a while. So that's a secret project. So you're going to see this like all together when after it's been gifted. But after it's been gifted is not a word and we all use and we tend to use it anyway. Once I have given it to her and she has seen it, then I will post any videos I have made about it. Hey, this is a snippet on the secret baby blanket. Um, I'm recording this one on the February 26th podcast. So the last time I just told you what the plan was. I showed you the pattern and the yarn. Um, now I've actually made progress, which is good since there was like 20 weeks in between. <laughs> um, there will be two rows of each color, but I'm doing just one row at a time. So these are for the first row. It's the pink. So we got pink with the green center and I've got bears started. Um, I'm going to do all the faces at the end. So right now, nothing has a face. Um, one thing I think I talked about last time was that I'm going to embroider the face. The original pattern had beads. And then uh, somebody on Ravelry had added a circle on the back. So I actually have a stack of circles also that will be able to be stitched on the back and cover the um, the face embroidery. So I've got uh, eight of those. <laughs> so pink bears, pink circles with a green center. Green bears, four of these. Green circles with an orange center, four of those. So this is row two. <coughs> Um, this is the start of row three. I have orange circles with a blue center. Um, all four of these are done, but the I have not started the bears yet, so it'll be orange, orange bears. Um, the next one will be blue with a yellow circle, and the last one will be yellow with a pink circle to bring it back around to the other pink. Um, I'm not in a on a timeline with this because they don't even know I'm making anything and but the baby was born baby is healthy so this is all good all right so that is the end of this little snippet So this is the March 11th update on the teddy bear blanket. And I'm very excited. All my scores are done. 
Um, I believe the last time I recorded, I had half the squares made. Um, when I did the second half, I actually decided to kind of um, do an assembly line fashion. So I took and did like all the middle squares. So I had just a little pile of these like squares that were like the size of a quarter. Um, and then I took all of those and did the next round. And one of the things I did is like when I was doing those circles, I didn't weave in the ends. I just went, <laughs> yeah, um, they start out with uh, 12 double crochets, a, ma a magic circle and 12 double crochets. So just do it. Do, 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 set it aside. <laughs> do, 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 set it aside. Um, so I did, I needed to make, uh, actually I had more than, no, I had half the squares done. It was just a, I ended up deciding to do, because of, I weighed my yarn, <laughs> um, the remaining yarn after I did the first batch because what I had done was I was doing according to the pattern you do um, you do 10 squares across now I'm using a heavier weight yarn so my squares are bigger than the original pattern um, so I assumed if I had the first five rows done with five teddy bears and five circle squares for each row that that was going to be half um, then I weighed the remaining colored yarn for all the skeins and there was no way I was going to be able to do another um, five rows of five bears, five circles. So what I did is I decided to shift it and now what I'll have is, uh, I'll have a picture. Here, I'll just put the picture here. So it's four bears, three circles, and then four circles, three bears, all the way down. And then um, that way I only needed to do, um, I don't remember, my math is off. If you remember back from when I first posted on this episode, um, I'm... I have been sick. So <laughs> this is the episode where I told you about being sick and having the flu and bronchitis and an ear infection. So my brain's a little foggy. <laughs> Math is not my strong suit. Um, it normally is. Anyway, I didn't have to make as many to finish. However, what I did was I did all the little circles and then when I was done with them, I did all of the weaving in on the ends of the little circles. Then I went through and did all the big circles and same thing. I did the circle, set it aside, did a circle, set it aside. When I was done, I wove in all the ends. Um, then I did the bare circles and um, same type of thing. I just made bare circles. And then I went through and wove in all the ends. And when I did the first set of bears, I was following the instructions and doing the bare circle then the square, and then attaching the ears. And it never felt fluid to me. So on the second set, what I did is I actually did the bear circle. I did all the bear circles, woven all the ends. Then I attached the ears, woven all the ends. Um, and then for the last bit, I did finishing the square. And I actually did it in, in groups. So like I did all the greens at the same time. I did all the squares for the circle ones and all the squares for these. And I ended up, as I was going around the corner, I just caught the back of the double crochet and tacked it as I went instead of having to tack it manually and weave in the ends. And the result looks neater. Um, and it just felt faster. Um, I have pictures of the tacking. They're a little hard to see, but I'm hoping you'll know what I'm talking about.
All right, and then I also was making circles for the backs, and that I was just kind of doing as I felt like it. So, but eventually I got to the point where all these were done and I had to do faces. So, at first I had it in my, well, I was telling you that math was not my strong suit. Well, because I was so sick, in my head, I had convinced myself that I had 90 bears to make faces for. Then I realized that, no, that wasn't right because I didn't make, my rows weren't nine across. They were seven across. So then I thought I had to do 70 bears. That wasn't right either because only half of the squares were bears. The other half were circles. So I actually only need to do 35 bears. Even still, I was still feeling like, at, well, at first I was thinking I would try and make the bears all different and have different expressions. And then I decided that that was crazy talk <laughs> a little bit. And they all ended up with different expressions anyway because they're made by hand. <laughs> but I kind of got into a rhythm of, um, I wove in the yarn right away. I actually started he on the back side. I, I basically started... I wove in the yarn down, up, stitched an eye, wove it through the back, came out the nose, made a nose, made the mouth, wove it through to make another eye, and wove it back. And that meant that actually, by the, while I was stitching, I wove everything in, so all I did was clip it, and the face was done. Um, I basically was doing in piles of 10. Um, well, I did a pile of 10, pile of 10, and then a pile of 15. Um, so I did face, I just did faces, trim the back. Then I sewed the back circle. So that hides, totally hides the embroidery of the bear. And it means there's no beads. This is all soft, squishy. Um, and so then I just sewed on the back circle. I can, and again, I did assembly line style. So I did in a batch of 10, I did all the faces, then sewed on all the backs. And then the next day I did another batch of 10. And then yesterday I did a batch of 15. So anyway, um, I could sew on a circle in about four minutes. <laughs> and yes, I had that kind of timed, not because I was trying to time it, but because I was trying to not stay up super late. Um, I have a bad habit of getting involved and then staying up late. And since I've been sick, that's a bad idea. So I was watching the clock more than normal. Um, yesterday I stayed up a little bit because I, at 10 o'clock, which is when I normally stop, I was four bears away from being totally done. And so, <laughs> and it was just the backs. It like everything else was done. All I had to do was four more backs and I could, and I'd be done. So anyway, so bears, um, I did different noses depending on what I felt like. Um, some of them, like he's got a little arch to his mouth. This one's got a little side smirk. This one's just kind of normal. Whatever I felt like and whatever the yarn felt like doing. And that was one of the things is I, when I stopped worrying about it being perfect, they came out way cuter. So um, they're going to be joined with a basic uh, single crochet join. That's what's in the pattern and it's quick so I'm planning to getting that done. I have a self-imposed deadline of next weekend so um, and I haven't decided on the border. I only have uh, the bear color left. Of Well I have some of the other colors but they're small balls. None of them is going to go totally around the blanket. So um, so I'm just going to do um, so I'm just going to do have the bear color. So I'm thinking maybe one row of double crochet around the edge just to, you know, firm it up basically and call it good. So I think they'll really like it. Um, and that's it. <laughs> so next time I talk to you, it will probably be totally done. And in fact, hopefully that will be the one where I've given it to the person. If not, it'll be soon after. Here is the final showing of the teddy bear blanket. I wanted to show it, I'm filming it different just so I'm hoping that I'm catching all of it. I also have kitties who want to lay on the bottom. 
but here it is. Um, each square is yeah five to six inches. Uh, yeah, and there are seven, so it's like thirty-five by fifty to sixty inches. Plenty big. Um, I am giving this to the recipient tomorrow which will have already happened by the time you see this. I'm recording this the night before. And, uh, but I've already made arrangements and I said, I just have a present for the baby. And I'm really hoping they love it. Um, I ran it through our brand new washer and dryer last night and it's super soft. Um, it, this is, um, I can't remember the main name. But it was Big Twist. You've already seen that part earlier in the video. And um, it's fuzzed up a little, but they're teddy bears. It's okay if they're fuzzy. Um, other than that, all the ends look good. <laughs> That's the main reason I like to pre-wash baby stuff. I mean, besides the fact that the cats want to play on it, etc. But also just to make sure if it's gonna have any problems. I always joke with best friend that if it's going to explode in the wash, I wanted to do it with me. So here it is. And I have close up pictures as well. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> you now know the secret project. It is this adorable, adorable teddy bear blanket. <laughs> I'm so proud of it. Um, and I I really do think they're going to love it. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm really excited about it. I've actually been like showing other people. I've been showing people at work pictures going, look what I made. I think part of it is because I haven't been able to really talk about it. Um, so. Um, I went to Joanne's today because I had, well, basically, I needed to, I needed to get felt to put um, between my Q-snap and my cross-stitch work. And when I went to Joanne's last time, I forgot that I needed felt. But I also had three 60% coupons and two 40% coupons, all burning a hole in my pocket. And... I actually looked at the Ot Lights for a really long time when I was there today because normally Ot Lights never go on sale. Or if there's a really awesome coupon, the Ot Lights are going to be on sale because the coupons always say not good on sale items. This time only one specific Ot Light was on sale and I had an awesome 60% off coupon. And I looked at all of them and decided... I didn't really need them. I've got a pretty good setup for my cross stitch, um, which I'm actually going to show you in a bit. But while I was there, I I was going to go to Target and get a gift bag for the baby blanket, but I was kind of being, well, lazy. I, I still don't feel good. I didn't, I'll tell you in a minute. So I picked up a big Joanne fabric bag. I figured it kind of matches. It's got dragonflies on it. Um, I don't know if they know I like dragonflies, but it's got dragonflies on it. <coughs> it's perfect size. And it was $2. And then I didn't have to go to another store. Especially because Target's one of those stores where I tend to go. And then go, oh yeah, I needed that. Oh yeah, I needed that. Oh, I didn't know I needed that. Oh, I don't need that, but it's really cool. Target is not really a good store for me. <laughs> I mean good store for them. They, they get more money out of my pocketbook. So I actually try to avoid going to Target. Um, so I decided that's going to be the perfect size for a gift bag for the blanket. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited that's done. Um, I basically worked on that until it was, well, a couple things. One, last Friday when I recorded, I told you guys that I had gone to the doctor again and been diagnosed with an ear infection, and so I was on antibiotics again. Um, so I was on antibiotics, and each time I took the antibiotic, I was getting 
itchier. Like it started out just a slight itch. Like I was stitching on Saturday and kind of scratching my hands a little bit, not really thinking too much of it. Um, by Sunday, I actually realized I was doing it and my feet were starting to itch. By Monday, I was actually starting to develop a rash in spots. I actually had like a reverse sunburn burn underneath my bra strap maybe too much information but basically because the bra strap was touching my skin there was a rash underneath it and uh so i i uh called the doctor and said i don't think this is normal and if i have to continue taking this medicine i'm going to rip all my skin off by the time uh friday comes around and i'm done with it and they were like stop taking it you're allergic to it and um she wanted me to take uh a dose of two better drill four times a day basically until it went away and so Monday night got new meds got the Benadryl um, emailed my uh, I emailed my manager and uh, the manager under me so one up one down and said okay well I was told to take Benadryl we can't carpool tomorrow so I'm gonna stay home because I shouldn't be driving on this high dose of Benadryl and my manager was like yeah don't worry about it because you're gonna be sleeping <laughs> and later when I came back to work she told me she actually burst out laughing at the the fact that I even thought I was going to be working and she was right because within half an hour of taking that double dose of Benadryl I was out and I pretty much slept from 8 30 until about 4 35 p.m the next day um, I did wake up in the morning. I woke up enough to like take my next dose and then I would take a dose and then I'd go back to sleep. I, in the morning, I was up long enough to tell my employee uh, that there was no way I was going to make it and um, there was a meeting we were both supposed to go to. So I like wrote out what I, um, where my head was at for that meeting so that he could you know, so he and I would be on the same page. We usually are, but it's, we always try and touch base just to make sure <laughs> so we don't sit in the meeting and realize we're talking two different things. Um, and I took, and then that was it. I was out all of Tuesday. <laughs> on the plus side, because I missed Tuesday, yesterday, yesterday was Thursday. I thought yesterday was Wednesday. So I thought I had a whole nother day of work. And then I asked best friend a question and all of a sudden I realized that it was Thursday. And I'm like, oh my God, that means tomorrow's Friday. And he's like, Yes. <laughs> I was all excited because normally it always happens the other way. Like you think it should be Friday, but it's not. Anyway, okay. So everything I did has either been finishing the blanket or sleeping or working on pumpkin passport. <laughs> this is my pumpkin passport. March is almost done. So the only thing left is there is um a there's a blob of blue. Or, well, it's a blue-green color that is the canal uh, right here. And then and then I'm going to extend the pink. But otherwise, March is done. Yay. Um, and one thing I figured out <laughs> is I, I have um, Knit Companion on my iPad. And Knit Companion is one of those weird apps where... It's a full-blown program. You need to take the classes on how to do different things if you really want to get the full extent. Um, Tiggy, please don't go on that. I don't want him to go on the blanket. <laughs> he, uh, I'll have pictures later. Or, well, I already showed you pictures and Missy was laying on the blanket, but that was before it was washed. Now it's been washed. <laughs> um, although have pets they're not really going to care but I just would like to give it clean okay anyway knit companion is obviously made for knitting but when I was doing the mystery shawl I actually paid for an add-on for something they call magic markers um uh, speaking of the mystery shawl I did not block it being sick and itchy and everything it didn't there's it didn't get done um but Magic Markers in Knit Companion, you have your PDF and you can highlight a certain stitch 
and tell it to search for every other place that that stitch shows up in the PDF and highlight it. Um, you can even tell it to only do that on even rows or odd rows. So I used it to mark the bead stitches. I highlighted all the bead stitches in yellow so they would stand out. And then because that shawl had, um, uh, there, was, there was not resting rows for a lot of it. There were actually decreases on the wrong side and the right side. I actually had it highlight the decreases on the wrong side rows. So in my head, I would remember that, you know, the slash on, um, if it wasn't highlighted, it was a right side row and it was a, uh, say a uh, slip knit, but on the wrong side row, it was a uh, purl two together because and I could highlight it on the wrong side row and then that would trigger to me that it was actually a different stitch even though it looked the same and you could tell it to only highlight the ones on the odd or the even rows in this case it was the odd rows so when I got to there's a point to this when I got to this I was really I did the the windmill and then I wanted to do the blades because I figured that once I got the blades done, the buildings were really just, you know, rectangles and you filled in where the holes were, and which was true. So the blades took a while, but the buildings didn't. Um, but I was having trouble seeing on the chart where the blades were. And they give you a color version of the chart and a black and white version of the chart. Well, I had been using the color version because I could see it, but through here, I was just struggling. So what I did, because there's very distinct colors in all of this, was I had a knit companion. I used the black and white version of the chart and highlighted the symbol for all of the uh, all of the blade. And then it just like popped off the screen. And so I could do all my blades. Um, and I'm going to show you a picture here of that because I took a screenshot. All right. So then because when I was doing this, I'm kind of picking a color and then working everywhere that color is. Um, I told it to change those to gray and picked a different color to highlight. And... Then I turned those to gray and picked a different color to highlight. So I have another picture where it shows that I had grayed out a bunch, which are the ones I already stitched, and, you know, the next one's highlighted. All right. So that was something that was working for me. Knit Companion is not meant to be a cross-stitch app. It is meant for knitting. It is isn't meant to go row by row by row. Um, you can't use it to like cross off a section of your of your chart as done. It's not meant for that. But because I already own it for my knitting patterns, um, I have found it useful for uh, joining charts um, or for, in this case, highlighting where I knew I was working on one color all at the same time. Um, other kinds of patterns it may not work. If you're doing a full coverage pattern with a lot of color changes um, and you're using the parking method, um, Google it. <laughs> I have not used the parking method, so I don't want to try and explain it. But if you're using the parking method, you're basically filling in one 10 by 10 square and then you do another 10 by 10 square. And in the meantime, you park your thread at the next place it's going to occur. Good enough. <laughs> and, uh, if you're doing that kind of method, so you're doing a block at a time, you can't use Knit Companion because there's easily because there's no way to like highlight a section of stitches to say that you did them because that's not what it's made for. Um, but for this, and because I already own it, it worked very well. So um, I also thought you guys might just want to see my setup. So I took some mini videos yesterday. Let me put them in here. Hey, this is just a little tidbit. Um, I thought maybe people would be kind of curious about my stitching arrangement, which partially because I think it's eh, it's a little odd. So I am sitting on a uh, 
reclining sofa. Um, and then I have my uh, needlework system lap stand in front of me. I also have a Missy girl who wants to come up here because she thinks I'm talking to her. I was going to show you where she likes to sleep. Anyway, so let me uh, flip the camera around and show you a little bit. All right, so here's my needlework lap stand. Um, I keep my, I keep one needle minder here that actually is just for setting my needle down. This is my needle threader. Um, sometimes I just thread it by hand, but sometimes the needle threader just makes it easy. Um, if I flip this around, I actually have my scissors on the back side of the needle minder because that's usually where I'm snipping. I'm snipping ends on the back and it keeps it handy. So um, this is my pumpkin passport. This is actually where she likes to normally be is in this little area underneath the lap stand and in my legs. And then over here, I've been using Knit Companion um, for my cross stitch. And I have a YouTube video on in the background. Sometimes I'm actually watching uh, an Amazon video on, like, in the corner here. It just happens today I'm watching uh, Floss Tube. So, I just didn't know if anybody would be interested. Plus, I wanted to show you Missy's spot, but she's not cooperating today. <laughs> All right, bye. All right. Also, when I was at Joanne's, I have um, an employee who she's been talking about that um, she misses doing cross-stitch. She used to do cross-stitch, but she hasn't done it for a while. And really, she's going to school. She's working. She doesn't have a lot of time. But I saw this at Joanne's today. And so I texted her. I texted her a picture. And she was like, and she started, and I get back, you know, she thought it was funny. And I said, do you want me to pick it up for you? It's $10 and I have a 40% off coupon. And she's like, oh, yes, please. Well, then it turned out that um, I actually got to use one of my 60% off coupons because they take it from the highest value. And uh, and some of the other things I bought were already on sale. So it ended up being $4. <laughs> and it says, it says, I'm not snarky. I'm selectively polite. And it's a really simple one. It's got the hoop and everything, but... So I was teasing her that I was getting her her gateway drug. <laughs> so I just thought it was cute. And it's just, I'm hoping it's just the right level for her to do and have fun with and not to be an additional stressor in her life. So, and actually be a release. <laughs> um, she's also the one I um, bought coloring a coloring book for a while back. And now everybody knows if she's coloring, that means leave her alone for a few minutes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I actually have a big cross-stitch project coming. I fell in love with this Disney cross-stitch. It is huge. When it comes, I'm probably going to freak out about the size. But um, to Nandy, Heather has encouraged me that it does not matter if it takes me a couple of years. You know, if I just keep plugging away at it, it will get done. Um, but I really, really like it. So um, it's on its way. <laughs> I actually bought another Q-snap so that I can just switch out because I really like my frame and um, I can just put the Q-snap in. I don't take these off the Q-snap. I don't know, maybe I should, but you know what? I never used to take things off the hoop either. And everybody says, oh, you should take them off. And probably if we're going to keep it for several years. But like um, this one, most of the image is going to be in the part that's visible. So oh, this is where I have paper here. <laughs> I bought felt so I could actually stick felt in between. Um, but I'm like, most of the image is going to be on what is visible on this. So... It actually is keeping it all nice and not wrinkled on that part. Um, anyway, so it is a gigantic Disney. And I, um, it's it's actually a full kit with the floss and the Ada cloth. Um, I actually went through and priced out how much it would be. Even if I found floss at a very cheap price and on sale. Even if I got floss 
with mom's discount, the ch kit was still cheaper. Um, so it needs, uh, what I, I bought the PDF first just to see the details. Um, it required 90 some colors of floss. And when I calculated it out, it was going to be like 260 skeins because of how much you need of certain colors. Um, cause it had the yardage of the colors and it just, it was going, it's it between that and the eight o'clock. Um, it was just going to start to get pricey. And especially because I needed a big piece of eight o'clock. Um, it was going to get pricey. So I calculated out. I talked to Heather cause she's like one of the most, um, frugal in a good way frugal people I know of just kind of watching and really thinking about that I'm not always so good about it um and she even said yep <laughs> just buy the kit so um that's coming I actually I ordered it on the 9th and today I emailed and said I just want to check did it ship because I ordered from Etsy but they didn't mark it as shipped so I wasn't positive so and they said yes it shipped they didn't tell me which day they shipped it. They could have shipped it this morning for all I know. But it's on its way. Um, I think that's all I have for you. So, and it's probably plenty. I feel like I haven't talked very long. But I know I'm going to be pasting in videos that were previously recorded. So, it's probably fine. <laughs> um, I am going to, my goal is to get this uploaded but not released and get this finished tonight um and then i need to wind up this yarn to make knitted knockers so i think that's it talk to you guys all next time um i don't know when i'll record next <laughs> i told you guys i'm sorry i keep saying i'm gonna go and then i talk on i probably do that a lot it's probably one of the things i'm known for um this weekend there's an event Next weekend, I'm going to visit my son and my mom um, because I have to take the cats. But I'm also helping my mom out with a um, new website for the store where she works. And my son wants, uh, he wants to get a haircut and we might go to the movies and um, I don't know what else. Actually, I don't know if we're going to go to the movies. I just realized that the last Divergent movie is out. And so I asked him if he would like to go see it because he and I have seen the other ones. <laughs> so he's the only person I really want to go with. Um, anyway, and I don't know whether I'm coming back Saturday evening or Sunday. So I don't know when I'm recording next. And then, sh then the following week we go to Nashville and we're leaving on Wednesday. So... I'm not sure. Now, do not forget, enter your projects into February and March um, because anybody that enters projects is going to be entered in to win a skein of Passion Flower yarn. Um, this one's mine. <laughs> you cannot have it. <laughs> you win your own skein. Um, and the coupon code uh, is Dragonfly. And that is still good until March 31st. So, and then also there is a giveaway for Cece's book. I was hoping that would come today. It didn't come today. Um, it should be here soon. It shipped out on Monday. So, um, I'm saying so and I'm a lot. Sorry. The book should be here, but you still have a chance to win a free ebook. We're giving away two copies. So, you need to tell me... Which pattern in the ebook draws your attention, and what is your favorite coffee bar drink? Um, it does not have to be caffeinated. Um, tea, chai tea, plain coffee, lattes, espressos, steamers, frappuccinos, water. They do have water there. Anyway, so there's still a giveaway for Cece's book, and the next recording I will draw for that. The next recording. Um, it'll depend on what day I do the next recording, whether or not I draw for the, for, um, 
Passion Flowers yarn or not because it'll be after March is over. So, but for sure, CC's giveaway ends next week. That is all. <laughs> for real. Bye now. That is not all. <laughs> Mom is being speedy and wants to have, um, she seems to want those um, instant gratification projects. She finished another doll. <laughs> yes, I just showed you King Tut. She finished another doll. Um, this one is a smaller doll. The pattern, I believe, is from a Princess Di bridesmaid pattern. Like there's the bridesmaids and the flower girls. But she totally redid it so that it is in purples and it looks very Victorian. And so this little girl is going to be able to play with her sister and play with a little dollhouse. And so it's very pretty. And I'm going to post those pictures here and say goodbye. <laughs> Bye now.